Monday 10th October 2016. All systems go for the Uhodari Pan-African competition at the Kenyatta University. The art of presentation and writing is complex, but when handled well, it can make a difference in one's proposal pitching, and so in numbers they came to learn from the best in the game. All in all, many were called, but few were chosen. After a tedious one-week training, only the cream de la cream would sail to the Pan-African Fellowship 2016. From the onset, the writing was on the wall. The best idea stands. So who made it to the top five? This is the Pan-African Fellowship 2016 competition brought to you by Fahamu Africa and Kenya National Debate Council. Most of the young people, especially in institutions of higher learning, have brilliant ideas. But the greatest challenge has always been where to get the funding in order to run with the ideas. In partnership with the Kenya National Debate Council, Fahamu Africa invited interested candidates to pitch their ideas during the Pan-African Fellowship 2016 program, which was held at Kenyatta University main campus as from Monday 10th October to Friday 17th October 2016. The candidates were first taken through the process of writing a winning proposal. Now the funding contract stipulates what the donors needs are in terms of utilization of the funds. So, and if you go against that contract, then chances are they can easily come and stop the project. In fact, they indicate it on the contract that they are at liberty to terminate the contract at any time if they deem fit. And that will be informed by how you've been going around your business after the signing of the contract. Is it as per the contract or against the wordings of the contract? My business associate um, told me that there are a million ways to succeed and there are a million ways to make money but there is one sure way of failure, sitting around and blaming others for your own problems. And I hope we can all work hard to ensure that we not only develop our country, but also develop our city now that we all live here. Fahamu is distinctively placed as a Pan-African organization supporting and working collaboratively with the social movements over the long term. This means that it creates platforms for analysis and debate. Put a problem here and put a solution here that can solve the problem. Sometimes when you are coming up with proposals, sometimes you are proposing a solution, a very big solution to solve a very small problem. Or you, uh, you have a very big uh, problem and you propose a smaller solution, which uh, it cannot really work. I wish you all the best. And when you come here, don't fear, you are allowed to make mistakes, but always remember, nobody will shoot you, just tell us what you are going to do and the kind of support you are looking for. This window gave the students a platform to present their ideas and indeed they got a chance to interact and convince the professionals that the ideas were valid. Um, Utawala having been characterized to have low rainfall, there is little, I mean, the trees which will be able to reduce and collect rainfall runoff that flows away during the rainy season is little. There are very few trees to provide shade, resulting to there being a very hot environment during the hot and dry months of the year. There's also noise from motor vehicles and motorbikes, which cause disturbances to school children, dwellers in their homes, and even the sick in their homes and hospitals, making it close to impossible for the daily activities to be undertaken. The dwellers and stakeholders have, have done little to sensitize the importance of planting trees in Utawala and other plants that would improve the microenvironment. A substantial number of youth in Utawala are unemployed. So there is need to generate income for these youths by engaging them in planting tree seedlings, flowers and vegetables and selling them to the Utawala residents to generate income for them and also employ them. 
or they, they'll employ themselves by selling these tree seedlings. So the, the climate in Tawala is relatively windy. This results to dust pollution, wind damage of property at times, and disease inced incidences from the unclean air caused by the dust. Trees, when, plant, when we plant trees there, we'll have control of this as their roots will hold the soil and leave the, and the leaves will break the force of wind. Yeah. My name, my name is Franklin Nyatem, and I'm going to present a project on eradication of poverty among the youth. And the title of my project is One Cuckoo, One Egg Project, that is meant to cover the region of uh, Kisi County, which is at uh, uh, starting from Kisi Central, then going to Gucha, then I'll end up my project at uh, Nyamarambe constituency. So, uh, when you look at uh, the statistics of this country, you realize that the youth occupy 60% of the project, of the population, of which in Kisi County we are having 21% who are actually uh, the youth. And out of these, 60% of them are unemployed, or if they are employed, they are in disguised employment. So it's that from that background that I decided to come up with this project that will actually be able to help the youth not only access capital, but also become a source of income. And at the end of the day, they are going to help in the eradication of poverty in this region. Then maybe people will ask me, uh, how am I going to do this project? And what impact am I going to create in this project? It's going to start out as a very, very small project, which uh, is going to involve 50 youths as a, at the beginning of the project. But uh, this, uh, these youth groups are going to be uh, our pilot project, of which, at the end of the day, they're going to form uh, a very bigger margin. And at the end of the day, that is going to impact the whole count, county. And how are we going to do this first? We are going to have uh, a project whereby these 50 youths are going to be divided into five groups, of which every group will have 10 members. And every 10 members is going to have a chair, and this chair is going to be having an overall manager who is going to be looking at this project and looking at how the project is going to progress. And they are going to be given uh, 50 heads of chicken, of which uh, with, the, uh, with 150 heads of chicken, they are going to take care of them. Uh, what they are going to get, they are going to make sure that uh, it's going to be uh, sold by the organization. From the selling of the organization, then they are going to uh, then they are going to share the profits, uh, the profits all together. Maybe people will ask, why did they choose the youth? We know that the youth carries the whole society. The youth uh, are the ones who are going to uh, carry this economy all along. So if we're going to concentrate on the youth, then I think they're going to help the whole community. They're going to help the family members who are not able to help themselves. And actually, they consist the highest population in this country. So if you're going to deal with this 60% uh, youths in Kisi County who are in disguised employment or who are not in any form of employment, then it's my belief that at the end of the day, we're going to have at least uh, dealt with the issue of poverty a great deal. Each candidate had his or her own unique idea that was meant to attract sponsorship. But as they say, content is king, but delivery is everything. My proposal is a movement which, as I've said, dubbed Freedom from Hunger through farming. Uh, farming is the main source of food in Kenya. And if we are going to end hunger, it will be through working with the small-scale farmers in Kenya. As you all understand, the small-scale farmers in Kenya make up to 80% of, of the total farmers in Kenya. Uh, the proposal shall focus on Nairobi and how to make food available, cheap, and the food to be effectively utilized within the populace of Nairobi. Uh, in Nairobi, there are people who cannot access food because it is expensive. Uh, by bringing together farmers from the environs of Nairobi, such as Limuru, Ngong, Kiambu, and uh, Kiserian, we will be able to, to bridge the gap between, um, between uh, the farmers and, and the consumers. As I said earlier, I shall target the small-scale farmers. Um, I intend to create a platform where farmers and consumers can meet on a one-on-one -on -one basis, interact, buy, 
sell fresh food at a considerable price and also have a chance for the consumers to be able to interact with the people who they buy food from. That way the consumers will feel that they're in control of what they eat and that is what we call food sovereignty. You know they say that when a girl has gone, uh, undergone the cut, the girl is taken to a certain place, seclusion, and then they are trained. So I want to introduce a new way of training girls, which is not by the cut, but by bringing uh, people who will come and advise them, teach them. And after two weeks of uh, that session, they will be issued with certificates that they have graduated from uh, childhood to womanhood. And that one will be a modern way of them graduating, and they will be proud of it other than experiencing a painful, uh, a painful deal. And I'm going to assist on promoting good governance and leadership through empowerment of the youth in Kajado County, Kenya. So we all, met, we all know the Bible in Proverbs 29:18 says, "When there is no vision, the people perish." And a common writer, Jack Welk, says, "Before you are a leader, success is all about growing yourself. When you become a leader, success is all about growing others." So the proposed project seeks to address the challenges of leadership and governance in Kajado County, Kenya, through the empowerment of the youth. The implementation of the project will be multifaceted, uh, addressing the existing policy and legal framework, resource mobilization and utilization for leadership and governance activities, human resource capacity building, and research on the relevant leadership and governance themes. The background of the project area, I'm uh, going to work in Kajado County, Kajado is located in the southern part of Kenya. It borders uh, Nairobi County to the northeast, Enarok County to the west, Nakuru and Kambu counties to the north, and Taita, Taveta County to the southeast. On my problem statement and rationale, uh, my village has approximately 8,000 people. That's according to the census of 2010, with about 4,588 households. So this project would exhaustively serve this population. I intend to establish 10 schemes. And each scheme would be occupy about an acre of land. Each acre will be serving approximately 800, because I said earlier, there are 8,000 people. So currently, no institution is working on the project. But I intend to make it happen, because it's lucrative due to the most uh, common that guys involved in there is fish farming, but at this time, fish farming is a decline. So I believe establishing this kind of project will enable the guys to get uh, much access to food products. My venture is a new platform, and it will it have, so it will have any competition. Considering the need for these agricultural products by everyone, labor would be cheap and I intend to, uh, to, bench, to venture and participate even voluntarily. Well, for some the art of presentation was just a walk in the park and from onset one could tell the ones that would make it to the top five. Now, my project aims at the provision of a link between the learner and the mentor. And when I say the learner and the mentor, I'll start with the definition of a learner or of a mentor, sorry. A mentor is a wise individual who influences positively another individual. And so my task is to bring these mentors, you and I, into the society and influence how the youth in my society get to think and focus on their future. Now, my sole focus will be on the learner. I say this, keeping in mind that I aim to solve the cause and not the, pro and, and not the effect, sorry. And the cause of the problem is most learners that come out of the institutions are not able to develop into positive individuals in my society. The problem being they lack, they lack mentors who would show them, Jaroge, this is how you're supposed to go. Or Luoj, this is how you're supposed to go. And so when they come out of the system, what happens to them? They have no sense of direction. They end up failing. And the impact I set to I set to achieve are that the individuals whom are, whom will be who will be produced sorry, by this system should be individuals who will 
positively impact my own generation, my own children, your own children. Summary. Uh, first of all, my topic is about uh, linking investors to startups and small businesses. So the proposal is basically a broad-based idea where my main objective is, as I said, to link up investors, be it large organizations, individuals, and even the government, to startups and small businesses directly. The need of linking investors uh, to startups is first and foremost to reduce the common problem faced by faced among businessmen and of sorry of inability to access startup capital for their businesses and also the failure of startup businesses in their first years of uh, existence. So my target populations are are the legitimately good startup businesses that individuals have and lack funding and capital to start. The problem will be solved through creation of a closed website, much of like uh, a portal, a portal where both parties, the, the organizations, the investor organizations and the startup businesses. So I'll create that closed website which is limited only to the, the ones involved. It will be like a portal where both parties are able to register and start the initiative process of vetting of good business ideas, deeming the business credible and sustainable, and proceed to the final step of funding by the investors. It is very important to write a business proposal properly and professionally. After the four days of training and presentations, the time to select the best of the best finally came. The moment that we've been waiting for the entire of these week has arrived. So I would call upon all the participants who are uh, part of this event. The participants who are part of of this event, please come to the front. All the participants, just come to the front. What I should say is that um, if you don't make to top five, it is a challenge. But remember, in any competition, it has to come to uh, a decision time where a number of you will, uh, will have to go and rework at your proposal. This is also a learning opportunity so that when other opportunities come, you will be in a position to do better. Proposals were brought in here and there and 15 of these people, 15 of these ABO students, made it to come for the Wodari competition. So by Wednesday we had to cut them down to a certain number, 10 who were judging today, and uh, we had five of our participants sadly having to, you know, but they still made it. They didn't step down. <laughs> they kindly made way for others who had better proposals, but that doesn't mean theirs were not good. That more uh, time now to improve on them, and we are with them from now onwards. For those who did not manage to get to the top five, all was not lost. The participants were awarded certificates and a token of appreciation thanks to Fahamu Africa.
the other side, the cream de la cream had all the reasons to smile. The proposals would be funded to the tune of 2,000 US dollars, which would definitely be a good start for them. The Pan-African Fellowship Program, which is run by Fahamu Africa, is intended to not only empower the young brilliant minds, but also mentor the young entrepreneurs who embark on projects that create an impact in the society. thank you for being with us and for choosing to participate. There are so many people who saw this call for proposals but you chose to act and the rest chose to ignore it. The conversation doesn't end here even for those who are not um, who did not make it to the final round or those who were eliminated earlier on today it does not end here we are here for you guys uh, you have our contacts I'm sure if you ask Ken, DC or Fahamu, we can share contact. Um, so once again, congratulations. And as I mentioned on the first day, uh, there are different activities we've planned for 2017 and 2018. And if I can just do a small recap, next year we plan um, to have like a learning year for you guys. Uh, we are planning, you've won a prize package worth $2,000 each. And as I mentioned before, you're not going to get it as a cash prize. Yeah, it will be money that will be utilized to um, improve on your proposals. So it's upon you to tell us as Fahamu, as KNDC, as, as the KU administration, because we are like your mentors now. It's for you to tell us how you want to spend this money and uh, you have to convince us because we have to see the impact of um, um, the specific activity you've chosen to do, the how, and how it's going to improve your specific proposals. Um, and uh, when you people, uh, when all the uh, five uh, participants um, in Kenya and the other 25 in the other five countries where this project is being implemented, when you are um, improving your proposals next year, um, it will also be an opportunity for Fahamu, for KNDC, for KU and our other partners to basically increase the, um, the number of stakeholders who we want to engage in this specific program. Um, yesterday when you were you know, meeting with Jack and the, some of the other mentors, we were meeting with other people who are very interested um, in this specific project. Uh, for example, we met the Junior Chambers Initiative, JCI, and they're very um, interested in working with you guys. Um, I had a meeting earlier on with um, Dr. Kosimbe, who um, is the director at the Chandaria uh, Incubation Center, down to right at the gate. And he's also very interested in seeing how we can partner with um, his department in terms of increasing your capacities, in terms of just learning and um, improving your proposals. So anyway, once again, uh, we look forward to working with you guys um, in the future, next year and um, in 2018 as you start implementing your proposals. So from Fahamu, we say thank you. And for those who are not familiar with our website, please go to uh, www.fahamu.org and um, to pambazuka.org which is our online newsletter so that you can have a better idea of what we do and where we implement our projects. <laughs> <laughs>